This series of surface analysis tutorials is brought to you by Taycan Technology UK. You can download bags from our official website. So welcome to this recording on 3D data. Uh, what you can see on the screen in front of you is a, uh, a sample that's been loaded into the BEX software. And I'm just going to show you a bit of background about what we're currently looking at. So um, what I have in this slide here in front of you is um, an example of two types of data. Uh, on your left, you can see a teapot representation within a 3D uh, uh, image here. And if we were to take a, uh, the zero, zero position right in the center of the teapot here, and for and look vertically at the Z values, you'll see there'll be a, a Z value for the lower teapot surface. And as you go up, there'll be another Z value for the top of the lid here with the handle on the lid. And you could do that for any position within the XY plane. So this data format is referred to as a point cloud of data, as noted here. It's essentially pure 3D data, and generally it's also referred to as stereolithographic data, so STL data. So each point has a unique X, Y, and Z coordinate, and there can be multiple Z values for a given uh, X, Y position. The standard format for metrology software is 2.5D, where each point is fixed on an XY grid. So if this is the Y and the X axis pointed to here, uh, there's a single value for Z, and that shows you the, that leads to the representation of the, the surface. So we have two data formats here, a 2.5D D data format shown on the right, and we have this point cloud or this 3D or this SDL data shown on the left. Now, what I'm going to show you in this presentation is the, the application of data from uh, X-ray computed tomography. And just as a simple explanation of what that is, I have a slide here, and you can see we have two cylindrical ob objects, a red object and a yellow object. We have an X-ray source, we have the cone beam projecting through the objects, and then you get a projection as you would in conventional two 2D X-rays. If we then rotate the, the objects for a given position and then take another image, what we end up with is multiple images of the, the red and the yellow cylinders. Uh, using established mathematical techniques, we can then reconstruct uh, the, these images uh, into a 3D image space, and that's called the CT volume. So if we just go back to our teapot, uh, if we were to take an x-ray of this teapot uh, and we were to look at, let's offset a bit, maybe where I'm pointing to here, uh, what we would then see, because we're using x-rays uh, and not optics now, is that we would see, for a given x-y position, we would see an outer surface of the teapot. We would also see the inner surface of the teapot. We would see the inner surface of the lid going vertically and then the outer surface of the lid and so on. So. In this example, for a given x, y coordinate, we've got four positional values for x. Now, that doesn't work within BEX. Now, the sample that we're going to be looking at in this video is actually uh, a dental sample. Uh, we've shown some work on the sample on the right in a previous video. The, the sample I'm now going to be using is this sample here. It's, it's a section of a human tooth. The section has been glued onto an aluminium backplate, and you can see there are some markers around that for various purposes. But the, the sample that we're looking at is this sample. Uh, the sample has been processed. Uh, I'm going to show you what that is on the next slide. Uh, this is the same object. It's covered in a transparent film, which is why it's a bit more difficult to see, but you can just about see the glue outline around the edge. The transparent film is being pierced with a um, circular feature here of 1.5 millimeters diameter. And then we've applied um, a very uh, low concentration citric acid, as noted here, uh, to actually look at the amount of wear that takes place. So the sample uh, that we're looking at is gonna be this sample. And just to note, there's a crack here, and there's a crack along here, uh, um, and we'll see that in the X-ray uh, information. 
Uh, this is just as a reference. This is a, a conventional TICAN technology Zara instrument measurement using an optical sensor, in this case the H sensor. And you can see here we've done a measurement and we've got the whole of the blue surface, that's the aluminium background. You've got the tooth sample. Uh, there's a box here representing an area where we were interested in the wear. And you can see the glue line here as well. Okay, now let's go back to, to Bex. Let's close that down. And the first thing I want to show you is how we load STL data. So we've taken the, the, the tooth sample I've just shown you. We put that into an X-ray machine. We've taken three-dimensional X-ray of the surface for a very small section of the surface because we're interested in wear. And if we go to load here, top left, uh, the first thing I have to do in this window, the standard Windows uh, window, is to click STL. And here you can see sample 2. So this is the sample that we're using. Uh, it's around 90 megabytes of data. And if I were to click this, it would load directly into BEX. Uh, just to save time in this video, I've already done that. And this is what you get. Now clearly, when you look at this image, it's not quite what we were expecting. And that's because actually the representation from the X-ray CT is not the conventional expert, uh, representation you would see from surface petrology. So actually the surface that we're interested in is this surface that's facing us. Um, and it's clear that the, uh, this surface is actually at 90 degrees to where we want it. Um, and we can see that from the axes here. So if we just zoom in, we can see the size of these dimensions. And uh, we want this plane to be the XY plane. So the first thing we need to do here, and this is a new example, we go to Edit. Uh, within Edit, we drop down. Um, actually, we're going to be using resampling later, but here you have the ability to rotate the surface. Uh, not rotate it graphically, but actually rotate it around its axis for, from a dimensional perspective. So what we want to do is we want to rotate the sample uh, around the x-axis. And here's the window. And I know uh, from prior, prior experience that actually we need to rotate this by minus 90 degrees. If we click OK, and then we wait for uh, about 30 seconds, it will rotate. Now, as, as it's doing that, I'll just explain to you some of the images here that you can see on the screen. Just for those of you who may not be familiar with Bex, uh, this is a height map of the surface. Um, and you can see the, the data is here. This is the height map on the left. Uh, beneath here is the cross-section of the surface, and I'll come to that in a second. And on the left, you've got the information about the sample that we're looking at, including the STL format and some calculations. And this is just a record of what, we, what we're doing. So now you can see uh, I've rotated the sample, and the, the name of the file has changed. It's got minus rotation. And now you can see that I have this now in the conventional form uh, of viewing it of standard metrology data. Now, it's not actually standard metrology data. This is still STL data. And we can see that if we take a top-down view. So rather than the 3D view, we've now got a top-down view. And I can just show you where the cross-section is by clicking this button in the center. And here's the cross-section. And if we show the cross-section, uh, you can see, uh, if you look at this cross-section corresponding to the position I've shown, that actually what we have is a surface that looks rather like an aerofoil. And there's a shape here. It's curved along the surf top surface. And then we've also got the representation of the lower surface, because this is now a manifold. It's a three-dimensional object that has a continuous surface for the whole object. Now, within Bex, we're not able to process a continuous surface like this, we need to have something that is purely a surface, not a 3D object. So the first process we need to do is actually very simple. We go to the, the height information here. As we've shown this before, we just move this up. What that's doing is it's going to cut off this lower section. And if I go back to here and just right click, um, just right click again, uh, it's actually off the screen. The, the, the option has gone off the screen and I'm going to fixate the scale. So I've done that. Just wait for that to process. That shouldn't take long. Uh, all it's doing is essentially cutting off the lower values, which it has now done. So now you see there's no red line along the bottom, and now we have a true uh, surface, as shown here in cross-section. 
Well, you'll notice a couple of features here straight away. Uh, if I bring this, just bring this one down a bit, just to show you some features. Let that recompute itself. And here you see a nice example. Well, first of all, as we follow this line across, we see that there are some something going on here. And this is obviously quite strange. And there's something going on here. And you can see that from this top-down view. Let's zoom in a bit. You can see this line here. And these two lines actually correspond to the crack that we saw in the, the photographic image. Uh, so let's do something now. This is a continuous line in the 2D. We now have the option with this um, curve here. Just click this. And now rather than plotting a continuous line, it's plotting data points. And now you can see straight away that we've got the capability with this, what is still SDL data, to show multiple Z values uh, for a given X, Y position. So just going along this line, the first thing we see is there's a crack. And actually the crack is internal to the surface. So actually, rather than just seeing optical uh, information on the top surface, now we're seeing information about the inner surface as well. Now, to remove that, and that's this is really the key demonstration of this particular short video, is that we need to convert this three-dimensional data format into a conventional 2.5D data format, and that's referred to as un .ti format. And we do that uh, by simply clicking on Edit. And here we have the option to resample the surface. So let's click on that. That opens a window. And you can see here, we in this window, we have options about how we redefine the surface. So we can change our definitions here. Uh, I'm not going to do this in real time because it, there's a, there's, it's about a minute or two of computation. But essentially, if we put values in here, then what I did previously is put 1,001 and, uh, and 1,251 over this dimension. So the grid spacing was set at 2 microns. And if we do that, so let me just cancel that. I'll load that information in because I've already done that here. You see, here it is. So this is now the same sample. You can see from where I'm pointing to at the top, it's been rotated, it's been rescaled by cutting off part of the, the height, and it's been resampled. And now you can see the surface without, uh, without the, cr the crack feature. Now, what this does is essentially in re re resampling is uh, it only takes one Z value for a given X, Y position. Uh, and it always takes the highest value. So the crack information is now lost. So we have now a continuous surface. And even if we click this, you can see it's a continuous surface. Um, so this is the key benefit of using the software. I've taken raw X-ray data using the SDL data format. I've loaded that into BEX. I've rotated it so that I can see the plane that I'm interested in terms of surface analysis. And I've resampled the surface. And now, as I was doing the resampling, actually that data set has been saved. So that has been saved to the file where you, you drew the original um, the sample from, the STL sample, it's been saved and now we have that information and we can save that for, for future reference. Now what I'm going to do in the next video on this is I'm going to follow on from this and I'm going to show you how we then do a three-dimensional roughness calculation of this surface which has, if you remember, it's been being measured by an X-ray system. Uh, so that concludes the presentation. As you know from all the previous videos, if you want to download the demonstration version of the software, it's available at the company website, Taikan Technologies. Uh, you're free to use the software, I think, for a limited period of about one month uh, without purchase. So um, I'll, I'll follow up with a, a video on the Gaussian, the 3D Gaussian surface of this data. Thank you for listening.